In the last section, we talked about the behavior of a consumer. It is the utility. So when I talk about utility, it is the satisfaction that is derived for something. Let's say a person starts to eat. Now, when he is initially hungry, what he thinks is, at least I'll have two slices of bread. Now, he consumes one slice of bread. What happens is, he still has a want for another slice and that's a kind of very strong want. So his marginal utility would increase. But as soon as he consumes a slice of bread, his marginal utility would start to decrease because whatever extra is going on, his speed to eat would decrease and consequently his uh, marginal utility would decrease because the desire or the satisfaction obtained from an extra slice of bread would decline after he has reached its peak that is the person is now full he does not want to consume more bread then his marginal utility starts to decline now as we have talked about the consumer behavior the marginal utility similarly is the marginal rate of technical substitution which we will understand in this lecture where we would be talking about production now to begin with be it anything around you you are consuming some things or other on a day-to-day -day basis it could start from your basic meal it could start from your housing it starts from your clothing any of the basic amenities, leave aside any other amenity, even the basic amenities, there is a kind of fulfillment that is required and that could be only and only met if there is production. So what is production? Production, I can simply put, is a process where input is transformed into an output. So whatever is coming into the firm is transformed into an output. Let's say you want to have a slice of bread or you want to consume chapatis. What would happen? You would have the raw wheat that would undergo processing. It would become a flour and finally it would be ready for a, a slice of bread. So what would happen here is a production. From input to output, we say this is the chain of production. Now this production requires numerous things. First is it definitely require a capital this capital could be in the form of land land or machines whatever is required okay but there should be something where this production process takes place the next is the labor who would be working day in and day out to bring out the production the third is the raw material definitely wheat is required in the case of processing to a bread so all these things when brought together can help transform an input into a output and with this output that's there <clears throat> you have the process of production that can be explained now simply put let's take a two factor example i have just two factors of production and that is capital and labor so let's say i have a factory but on that factory, there is no labor to work. Will there be any production? Obviously, no. On the other hand, I do not have any capital with me. I just have a huge workforce that's there. But without any capital, will these labor be of any use? Will there be any production that would be coming out? Obviously, no. So there has to be a balance between the capital and the labor. At no point of time, I can say if I don't have a labor, uh, if I don't have labor, only capital is fine. Or if I don't have capital, only labor is fine. That cannot be the scenario. So production process is an instantaneous process. It's a creation of economic utility from where producer gets involved with the consumer. And it's where you bring both the producer and the consumer together you have the process of production and cost cycle that we understand in microeconomics now what is the price of the input the price of the input i can say is the cost of the production so cost of the production would be the price of the input that is going in then you have input of the firm and that is your production factor 
then what is there is the output which is sold into the market now this output which is sold in the market comes as revenue so what we actually understand is this revenue can be explained by the cost and the profit that a firm is acquiring a simple way to put this up is let's say i have something uh, let's say earphones that i produce for 80 80 bucks and then i have a 20 of profit that i can have on it what would be my revenue my revenue would not only be the just the profit that's just the profit i have but the revenue is the total cost along with the profit so my net turnover here would be 100 and that is my cost plus the profit i have taken so revenue if positive it's good definitely denotes that you have a uh, profit making but if the revenue is less than the cost it denotes loss again for anything to exist into the market the aim is maximization of profit so by sole mean a producer is aiming to derive a maximum profit so that is the very essential concept under the production how the process of production goes what is production along with that you have one more important thing the types of production so the types of production can be explained as first the form production where i'm just using the raw material and bringing out the finished product the next is place production place of production explains the transportation that is involved the third is the time production so time of production explains let's say uh, uh, you have strawberries that are grown at place some um, place x and transported to place y but these are the fruits which are highly perishable so what i need is a good cold storage that is there so cold storage becomes essential the third is the production where we understand the services so these could be the professional services the professional skills involved so teachers lawyers doctors so all those come under the service sector so that's the very essential of the production process